my name is Apoor and I work with Civic Data Lab. At Civic Data Lab, our goal is to make public data sets more accessible and actionable. We do this by building open data platforms and by working with our partners to process and analyze this data so that public data can be used as a tool for civic engagement. Now, if I go back to the R, uh, R Markdown file here, if you see, uh, we have, uh, let me start from the beginning. So for the first step we are doing here is sourcing all the files. So the first thing we, we are, so the first file we are sourcing is source libraries daughter, which is a list of all the libraries. The second file we are sourcing is leaflet options. Now let us see what this leaflet options look like. Now leaflet is a library that we are using to plot maps. So I'm going to code and I'm opening leaflet options dot R. So inside leaflet options, I can declare all the uh, uh, various options that you get to use to customize your maps. So here I'm just using a minimum zoom level and a maximum zoom level. And there are other things I am doing. Like, let's say I'm declaring a color palette, which is to be used on the map, but we will return to the color palette a bit later. So this is the this is one of the files that we are sourcing because for every map we will we will need a minimum zoom level and a maximum zoom level. Now why is that needed? Because if I go back to the analysis file, which is here, you see that I can zoom in or I can zoom out. And if I refresh this page, this will always open at a particular level. And this default level is what we are setting in the leaflet options file. So this is one of the files that we are sourcing going back to the R markdown file. The third file that we are sourcing is the merge data gis.r. Now I just explained what are we doing in this file. We are basically merging the data file that we got from ECI and the uh, shape file that we got from data meet. So let me quickly walk you through the code of this file. And uh, you will, uh, there's a very important concept to be learned here. So the first thing we are doing is reading a shape file. Now shape file is a very special file. It's not an Excel file. It's not a CSV file. It's not a PDF file, but it's a dot geojson file. And because it has a different extension, it is a, uh, it, it, it has a different way of, uh, you know, getting encoded. You need a special package to read this file. In this case, we are using the SF package or SF stands for simple features package, which is a GIS package, which is available in R. So the SF package ha has a function which is called read underscore SF, which is used to read this shape file or dot geojson file. So the first thing we need to do is to first read this shape file. And then, as I said, we have to make both the state names and the parliamentary constituency names which is the key based on which we are joining or merging data files and the shape file. So we are just ensuring that we are um, all the names, all the state names and all the parliamentary constituency names are trimmed and are also in lowercase. So that is one of the things we are doing with shape file. And let us now see the data file, the file that we have already processed, which is the constituency analysis file. So first we are reading this file because now it's a CSV file. So we are using read underscore CSV. Now what we're doing is we are merging the files, which is we are merging the constituency analysis file and we are merging the PC underscore shape file. We are using a function called as inner join. Now what will inner join do? Inner join will only, the final data set will only have columns or rows uh, which are present in both the files. So that is the inner join is basically an intersect of both the uh, both the files that you are joining. So uh, the final data set that we need should ideally have 543 rows. So you should always keep the final data, the structure of the final data set in your mind just to, to avoid any errors and also to do checks once the join has happened. So you have the constituency map file, which is so basically you're declaring a variable constituency map file, which is inner join of constituency analysis file and shape file and by state name and constituency name. So this step will merge or join both the files. Now, the other thing you need to do because you will need this. Now, the output of this join step will be a data frame. All right. Now, data frame is an object or uh, is an object in R. Uh, and but if, if you remember, you have to plot a map. In order to plot a map, R needs to know what R needs a, a special object, which is not a data frame um, or a data frame can't directly be used to plot a map is the correct way of saying it. What you need is a SF object or SF is simple features object. Now there is a function which is ST as SF, which is again inside the SF package. Now you will see that whenever you're doing a lot of GIS analysis 
or spatial analysis of any sorts you will use this package a lot because it is built for that purpose it has a lot of gis functions stssf is one of those gis functions which what it will do is it will take your data frame and convert it to a uh, sf object or a simple features object and then you can take that object and plot a map so this is a, again a very important step and if you don't do this you will get a lot of errors and uh, you won't be able to plot a map so now the final thing we are doing is constituency map file is created which is now an sf object now i go back to the rmd file so we were here so now this step or when we source this file our map file will be created now this is clear going down now again going back to our last session where we saw okay how our markdown files are created so we first start with an introduction and then so whatever you see the text which is written here the text which is written here all of it is part of the r markdown file what we are interested in right now is how we plot this map so i'll quickly jump to the map code now if you see this this part this is the part where our map is getting created all right so some of the important things to note here and these are some of the very basic components whenever you create a map the first thing is a color palette what is the color palette that you are going to use now what do we mean by a color palette color palette is basically a set of colors that you are using on your map so for example in this case because we only had to plot two variables so we are using two colors let's say if there is uh, so maybe there are other analysis let me quickly check if there are other analysis where uh, we are using more than two colors let's say for example this map which is the on on the home page of our project website you can see that there are three or four different colors used so color palette is basically a collection of colors now going back to our uh, uh, our map so the first thing that we are doing is creating a color palette now how do we create a color palette so color palette uh, so this is a function which is color underscore factor which we are using now what this will do is so this will return a function so this will not return any values this will return a function and this will be clearer when we plot it on a map for now what you need to understand is we are using a map color palette variable here now if i go back to leaflet options you see that our map color palette is a collection of these colors now i am using these uh, 10 different colors for our map uh so i am using the paletter function which is part of the paletter package to generate colors based on a particular theme and this has generated 10 different colors for me now what i need to do is use these 10 different colors so basically let's say are in this case we are plotting where the where more female or more women voted than men basically we need two colors one for men and one for women so out of the, out of these 10 colors uh, we will choose only two colors and wherever a women voted you will see a particular color and wherever a men uh, wherever women voted less than men you will see a different color so basically out of these 10 colors we only need two colors and that is what this pal or this function will do for us now the other thing we need to see here is the label now what is a label i'll go back to our analysis file again and here you see if i if i hover on a particular district or a sorry a particular parliamentary constituency i see that the name of that parliamentary constituency is written and then you have total women votes now this complete box that you see here is called a label and how we are designing this label is here so and and you can customize it as an you know you can write anything you want here you can use different symbols uh, you can use images etc in this section to customize your map or icons for that matter but we are using a very simple label here which is just the name of the parliamentary constituency and the total women votes so this is again an important thing the other thing you need to uh, you need to uh, add to the map is a legend because otherwise people won't anyone who's looking at the map if you don't add the legend they won't know what a blue stands for or what a green stands for so that is what the bottom right if you see there's a legend which says blue stands for more male votes and green stands for more female votes so this is a legend and now if i go down the final process is to kind of merge everything into a map which is what we are doing so we are saying constituency map file now remember this map file has already has the boundaries so constituency map file we are calling the leaflet package the leaflet package will read all the boundaries using the tiles function 
Now this will create a base map for us. And then what we are doing is we are creating add polygons. Now the first constituency map files leaflet and add tiles will create a base map. But we need a map with colors, which is also called a chloropleth. Now a chloropleth map can be created by the function called add polygons. Now what this add polygon will do, this will uh, add a color based on a particular variable. And where we are defining that variable in the fill color option. Now you see that inside this fill color option, we are using a variable which is flag more women. If you remember, we created this uh, variable in the constituency analysis file, this one, the flag more women, where if there are more women, it will be the value, it will be W, otherwise the value will be M. So based on this variable, the fill color will create uh, or will add colors on top of a base map. And then all the other things you see like color, opacity, weight, dash array, these things are used to customize your map. And the last thing you're doing is adding a legend. The legend we have already created, which is in the, and the legend will be added in the bottom right corner. Uh, and this is how you will create a map. And if I run this code, it will create a same map that you see on the web page here. All right. So a couple of things, I'm again summarizing the whole map creation process. So first, what you need, you need a shape file. Then you need to make sure that your shape file and the data file have consistent IDs. In this case, the IDs that we are using is the name of the state and the name of the parliamentary constituency. So we have to make sure that both these columns across both these files match. The third thing you have to uh, do is select a, a create a variable which will be plotted on the map. The fourth thing is you will have to create a color palette which will be done on the basis of the variable that you need to plot. And then you will have to write a leaflet function which is you create a base map and then you color your map based on the variable. This is how you create a map in R. Now I hope you find these sessions helpful um, and we'll continue exploring the data sets further. So please stay tuned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.